Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. If you can see my office, you see my I'm getting my office is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We're uh, closing our store to Shockton, and we needed some room to put a few things. So anyway, good morning. It is um, Tuesday, I believe, the fifth of January, two thousand twenty-two. Has anybody made a mistake yet and wrote down 2021? Uh, I used to do that all the time when I used to do my long book, driving my trucks. And whenever the new year would start, I used to make a mistake and put the previous year's date down. Anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. we will put down, um, let's see if, let's see if Melissa is here. All right, give me a second, guys. Let me see if there she is. That's Karen. Say good morning to Miss Karen. Which reminds me, I mean, I want to call him Doug today. Um, and Leonard. And Kelsey. And anybody else that would love to join us. I wish I could, like I said, we all need to petition Facebook. I don't know how much longer I'll be on here. I'll probably be back in jail again. This time it'll probably be for a year. <laughs> but uh, I need to petition to Facebook to put down one button if you want. It's an option to invite all. But maybe they won't do that because maybe there is a few people in that whole group that you don't want to invite but it can always be an option you know what i'm saying it can always be an option so who thinks it's cold outside i do it's not as cold i don't think it was yesterday yesterday it was and to me it was bitter cold the wind it was like like any other ohio wind if you give it a minute or two, it's gonna it's gonna bite right through you. I used to say that if the wind would stop blowing, it'd be 20 degrees warmer. Uh, it's that Ohio wind off of Lake Erie. Uh, anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning. Going to start here right now. Okay. So good morning, Don. Uh, did you like your present? Uh, we gave Don a unique, special from the heart. Christmas present. She got late, but she got a present. <laughs> I want to say, she, I think she enjoyed it. Tell oh, Maddie, my girl Maddie. Which one, baby? Okay. Again, if you uh, are just now joining me, <clears throat> my office is filled. Not filled. Just got more stuff in it than usual because we're closing our store in Shockton. Um, several reasons. One, it wasn't profitable. Two, um, I want to spend more time with my my family, my grandchildren, my wife, my children. Um, and that wasn't happening. We were I was just tired a lot. I still am seven days a week, tired a lot. So um, I want to be able to spend more time. And, and then three, I want to do God's work. He may or may not be moving us somewhere else. We're just gonna to wait to hear what he has to, what he wants us to do. Okay. Prayer request. Um, I want to say a prayer for um, um, Golden Hearts, uh, uh, a heart for the voiceless, voice for the voiceless. Uh, say a prayer for them. They do we're doing a wonderful job, and um, I'm get to be blessed to be part of that. And so say a prayer that uh, God does wonderful things to us and to our town and the people around us and um so say a prayer for that say a prayer for i guess rob portman we're supposed to like mike and i was talking this morning we pray for our leaders rob portman uh of ohio uh, congressman of ohio senator of ohio is um i guess this diagnosed with COVID. so say a prayer for him i guess he's asymptomatic so he doesn't have them symptoms so I'm coming up my dog here, uh, my wiener dog, who's always cold. And um, so, anyway, so, oh, I'm not there you go. There you go. All right. So, anyway, mine is and don't like to be covered up at all. 
So say a prayer for him, say a prayer for our country. Um, please say a prayer for our country. That 2022 will be such a revival um, in the hearts of the world, especially this country. Say a prayer for, for um, this country, would you please? For 2022, that'll be better in your life to get closer to God, better in your life to be more obedient to God, better in the lives. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Say a prayer that um, the people in this country will stand up, the Christians, the, the ch children of God. Now, the true children of God, first and foremost, examine your heart and your life. Don't just say you know God. Don't just say you believe in him. Don't just say, um, you know, you go to church. Don't say that. Ask yourself, do I have an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship? Don't, I don't, don't just talk to him and expect him to answer my prayers. I don't just come to him like a genie, but do I have an intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with my Father, my Lord? Do I obey him? Do I love him? Do I serve him? Do I keep in constant communication, keep in constant uh, meditating on his word? If that's the case, then um, ask yourself, you know, what can I do uh, to be more obedient? Um, pray that he'll use you in such a mighty way. Pray that his children will stand up and be children and that uh, we'll take back... Um, this country, it was it was made to be a godly country. God formed the United States of America to be a godly country, to be the role model of what other countries should uh, be like. Uh, democracy, freedom, and all. So say a prayer that your life, my life, and the children of God will stand up and be children of God better in 2022 than they've ever been. Okay, Lord, we lift up those that are sick. Lord, Rob Portman, our senator from Ohio, who's got COVID, we lift him up. We lift up, um, Lord, we just lift up our hearts, our life to you, that you will um, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You are, give us the mind of Christ that we have love for one another. We are humbled. I was thinking that this morning, that we're humbled. We no longer walk around with our head up high like it's about us. Um, but we humble ourselves to our children, to our grandchildren, to those out there that are lost, to the sick, to the dying. We'll humble ourselves, Lord, and be obedient. We'll be the, the lambs that the shepherd Jesus uh, came to die for. So help us to do that, Lord. Help us to get into the Word and learn more about your, your Word and what we should do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, say a prayer for Chuck. Yeah, Chuck... Uh, yeah, again, and I, and I forgot about Chuck. Well, and we, we've been praying for Chuck on and on. Um, Chuck Eichel, I believe his name is. Good morning, Leonard. Pray, say a prayer for Chuck. He lost his wife, and if anybody's lost a spouse that you you spent many years with, loving and cherishing, and, and, and you lose that spouse unexpectedly, um, life is tough. So say a prayer that he gets um meaning back in his life that he gets uh, a big hug from God that he gets uh, the love shown around by his friends and family and that God can get him through this so say a prayer for Chuck would you please um, thank you Mary for for reminding me of that um, go visit <clears throat> I was asking I was I had asked the other day yesterday I think it was um, to visit. Um, also, too, the guy's name is uh, Roger Philippum. I've known him for a long time. He guess he has got the COVID real bad up in Columbus Hospital. Uh, if you get a chance, go visit. Uh, don't be afraid of, of, of this disease. Um, pray. Let God use you to go in there and minister, lay hands on, to heal these sick people. They really need it. They sure do. And um, it's easy. Hey, Becky. It's easy to, to say, well, I'll just pray for, and I'll pray for, and that's what we need to do. But maybe God wants to use you to be the answer to uh, their prayers, your prayers, and everybody else's prayers for that person's life. So say a prayer that God will use you to be the answer to that prayer. It's easy to say, I'll pray. Um, absolutely. Uh, if you can get his address. Is he still in the hospital, or is he home? <clears throat> Um, say, say a prayer for, for Chuck. Um, go visit, you know, take away time away from, <clears throat> I'm going to get down and dirty here. Take time away from your TV, from your football games, from, you know, your, your, your own. He's home. Okay. Give me his address if you can, uh, and see if it's okay. I called him several times and left messages, but I haven't heard from him. 
but uh, take away time from your your life. Um, pray and let God use you to go visit uh, people that are sick or that are having a hard time. They're homeless. Like I said, I'm I, I'm getting ready to get voted in to a group here in Coshocton called um, um, Golden Hearts, a voice for the voiceless. And uh, not only do they go around and try to find missing people, but uh, on the agenda for this year, we're going to be helping out the homeless people here in this area. The prostitutes, you know, I haven't seen any, didn't know there was any, but I, I was told there are several in this town. Um, but say a prayer for, for us that uh, you know God can use us in a way that's, that's uh, helping. I mean, we're supposed to, the Bible says, go out and help the poor, the sick, the widows. You know, those out there that don't have an income or, or, or are on a very tight fixed income and they're having trouble with their grass, having trouble with their leaves, that, that need help, you know, fixing the pores, that need to know Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. And many of us don't. We many of us go home and we sit down after a hard day, we eat our dinner, watch TV for two or three hours and, and uh, you know, go to bed and wake up and do it all over again. And God's looking down and saying, you know, I could do so much through you. But you have to be willing and humble. And let's do that. Let's be that 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 vice. Let's be that tool that God can say, "Hey, Mary is good at that. Leonard has got a skill in that. I've given it to him. Now I, let me use Leonard. Or so and so's got money, um, and this organization needs you know funding, whatever. Let's do it because that's what we're called to do. Let's be better children in 2022 than we were in 2021." Um, yeah, absolutely, Mary. Absolutely, I, I, I would love to go see him. I would love to go see him and and uh, pray with him and and uh, give the man a hug and and uh, that's what it's about. When my dad died, um, I didn't want to hear words, you know, that I care. Now that my cats, come here, my cats. I didn't want to hear words. Oh, okay, I care. If you need me, let me know. Um, I wanted to see it. It's easy to say I'm there if you need me. Um, do it. Send them a card. Um, if someone's lost a loved one, they're definitely going to have a hard time financially. Send them, send them a card with a few dollars in it. Uh, call them up. FaceTime them. Uh, send them something on 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 you know Facebook, whatever. Saying, hey, I want to let you know I'm here for you. But that's not enough because most people will do that. Most people have the heart to send a, a thing on Facebook. Most people do. Right, exactly. Go to them. Let them know. You know, I just want to let you know that God loves you, and He sent me today. And I just, is there anything I can do? I mean, uh, and if there ain't, just know that He cares. And I know you don't think about that in this time because of your loved one passing away. But let me tell you what. If your loved one was a child of God, there, would you rather have them in heaven now with what's going on? Or would you rather have them down here? Um, I'm selfish too. I, I want my wife here. But um, when God calls her home, then I'm going to be the first one to, to sing praises and dance and sing. And like, yes, you got yourself an angel, God. Um, and I'm going to see her soon. So... Uh, did a funeral um, about a week ago um, with the family, and I and I told him um, if Robert could sit up out of this casket now, he would tell you guys to live, not just be alive, but live. And that's what I'm telling you guys today: live, live. Spend more time uh, this year with your loved ones. Do things with them. Uh, tell them how much you care for them. Um, acknowledge. Uh, what they've done for you in the past. Um, let them, the best thing you can do is let them know about Jesus Christ. You know, tell them, you know, I love you, but I don't love you as much as, as God does. And, and it, would you like to, to know how much he loves you? Tell them that, because that's going to be the greatest gift you'll ever, ever, ever give them. Uh, uh, I appreciate you, Mary. We really do. We really appreciate uh, uh, down there. That's what I was just saying earlier. I, we're we got our store. We're closing our store. I want to spend more time backing up what I say and doing more things for the people in my community and for my my Christian family. For those people out there, um, and instead of sitting down uh, worrying about the profit, God will take care of my bills. He always does. Um, 
I'm going to spend more time doing what I say. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I pray that <clears throat> that's your heart. Okay. Remember, that's the second greatest commandment is to love others as you love yourself. That means you don't put yourself ahead of the needs of, of others. You don't put your needs ahead of others' needs. Okay. Uh, remember joy. If you really want joy in your heart, J is Jesus. You put him first. O is others. You put them ahead of yourself, which is why, J-O-Y. If you put Jesus first and then others and then yourself, that's true joy right there, okay? That's called being humble too. I need that. Pray for me because I prayed for that this morning. Lord, I need to be more humble. I need to be more humble. Um, I need to be more humble. Um, we w I was praying this last Sunday and a message that I gave was similar to what I'm talking about now. And this gay guy was put in my path. And um, I pray and pray for him. I don't know his name, of course, but um, he tried to make it that um, it ain't a choice that you're born that way. You're born with that desire. And I try to explain to him. So if I if I have this desire to take something that's not mine, I see you know someone's walked away from their desk and there's a twenty dollar bill in their desk, and I have the desire to take that because I can really use twenty dollars. I'm out of gas. Does that make me a thief? And it does not. Um, so let's make 2022 better. Okay. I pray that we do this. Um, ask yourself, seriously, don't get back in that same rut. If, let's get out of that rut. Let's get out of that me rut and get into that he rut. And then ride it all the way. Good morning, my, my beautiful wife. Ride it all the way to heaven. Okay. Let's get out of the me rut this year. No me rut. Okay. Um, watch out for the depression Satan's going to throw at you. Watch out for the um, the trials and tribulations. God said you're going to go through them. You're going to go through them. We all are going to. You can either let the trials get you stronger, get you wiser, get you closer to Him, or you can let those trials knock you down, kick you around, and make you into something that's, that's you're not useful to nobody. So when you go through these trials, and it's going to happen, you might lose a loved one, you might lose your job, you might your car may break down, you're going to have some tough time this year. That's when we band together as a family. We get together as a family like this, and we get through it together. He's in the middle, God's in the middle, and around him is us. We get through it together. So no ruts this year, okay? You keep me out of, out of the rut, I'll keep you out of the rut. And let's, let's get on to that, that Jesus Christ path and ride it. That means when he calls you to help people with money, give people money. Good, good morning, Carla. Um, when when God calls you to get away from the house, so-and-so down the road uh, uh, needs a hand, uh, a friend calls you up and, and uh, their car broke down, or some, you find out that somebody needs food, get into that Jesus rut this year. Don't get into that, that Satan rut where he's going to have you focus on all the 99 bad things Usually it's one. Usually it's one or two bad things Satan wants you to focus on, not the 99 good things that God says I've given you. If he's blessed you, why don't you take some of those blessings and pass it on? That is, that's what I want you to do in 2022, okay? Get into that Jesus rut. Ride it all the way to heaven. And while you're doing that, take Joe with you and Tim with you and Barb with you and let him know on the way, you know, Jesus loves you. Let me tell you how he loves you. Come, get on, get on board. And that's what I want you guys to do, okay? Um, we need to... There's COVID ain't going nowhere. Guys, it's not going anywhere. I'm telling you, it's not. All right, Satan put it here, okay? The Antichrist is on the scene right now. I'm here to tell you. Um, and it's on the scene right now. And so it's, it's not going anywhere. Right now, we have a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time right now. Just at, we're, we don't have long, okay? Okay. <laughs> Jesus is getting ready to get told by God the Father, go. And he don't even know yet, but Jesus is getting ready to get told by God the Father, go. And the eastern sky is going to part. Okay? We don't have time. We don't have time to sit on that woe is me rut. We have time right now to get up. Dust off that crap that Satan threw at us last year. Put our head, hold our head high. All right? Put on the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, happiness, long-suffering. Put it on. Put on the armor of God which, and, and take the shield. Make sure there's shields in your hand and start um, casting that word against Satan and all the forces. Good morning, Miss Karen. Cast the word right here against Satan and all his forces. How do you know what to, to cast it? Read it. 
memorize it. When Satan comes at you, say, no, 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 no. Get thee behind me, Satan. You're not fit for me to wipe my feet on. I am not taking that. I'm not accepting that. I'm, I'm in the Jesus rut. We're on our way to heaven. In the meantime, we've got things to do, and I ain't paying attention to you. Say that and really, truly mean it, okay? God's going to allow temptation to come your way. God's going to allow a trial to come your way to see how you're going to get through it with him. And then once you're done, you're much stronger. And now if someone else around you is going through that same situation, you can say, let me help you. Let me tell you how God got me through this. And let me get you through it. And that's that's the rut we're going to be in this year, okay? It's called the Jesus rut. We're all going to get on board. We're not going to focus on what Satan wants us to focus on. We're going to put on spiritual glasses. We're going to look towards him straight ahead. And when he tells us to get off and go do this, we're going to get off and go do what he calls us to do. In the meantime, we're going to get right back on. And we're not going to focus on Satan and all that crap because it's going to happen. Guys, you're going to have loved ones pass away. You're going to have things that's going to happen in your life. And you're going to say, why me? Uh, Jesus said, <laughs> he said, you know, the same trials and tribulations you're going through, other Christians are going through the same thing. Stand fast. Keep your head up. I'll get you through this. Okay. And what's the best that's going to happen? He's going to take you home. Right? Right? You're, you're right. COVID and the flu are really going on uh, bad around here. And that's what, Miss Karen, we're going to pray for that. We're going to give it to Jesus Christ. We're not going to focus on it. Uh, we aren't. Okay? If everything around you is going to hell in a handbag, you were smiling knowing that Jesus Christ is still in control. He has never lost control, nor will he lose control. Okay? It looks like it sometimes because Satan wants you to look that way. He wants you to see it that way. It's not. Okay? Um, it, walking with Jesus is probably the hardest thing that, that you'll ever do. People, people want to think, well, I, 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 I said a prayer and I give my heart to Jesus. Now everything should be great. Really? If everything is going great in your life all the time, then you should be worried. You should really be worried and ask yourself, okay, do, am I really on that Jesus train? Am I really born again? Am I really doing what he's calling me to do? If everything is going really good, maybe, just maybe we're doing, you're doing what Satan wants you to do and focusing on yourself and sitting down watching TV all day long, eating bonbons, and, and, and you're ignoring the things around you that need uh, godly attention. Because once you give it godly attention, Satan's going to come at you. Once you do what God calls you to do, Satan's going to come at you, and he's going to come at you hard. And if you're all by yourself, if you're not part of a church body, if you're not going to church, um, and some can't make it out because of, the, of, of their health, and, and, and I understand that, then you join us live. But if you're not part of a church body, Satan's going to pick you off. He is, remember Peter said, and so did Jesus, that he is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's a liar and a thief. He's seeking who he can devour. And if you're not strong in the body, he's going to pick you off. And then you're going to wonder, woe is me. And you're going to call up everybody and ask them to pray for you. And all this stuff is happening to you. Um, don't, don't let it. Shake it off in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not allowing that. I'm not. I'm focusing on what he wants me to do. I don't have much time left. And whatever time I've got, I'm moving forward. I'm marching to Zion. I'm marching to Zion with my feet pounding, my armor on, my sword swinging, and praise on my lips. Praise on my lips. You know what I'm saying? So, um, love you, honey. Uh, Paxton and Zayden. Papa wants to say hi. But that's what we're going to do. So, I know it's easier said than done. You keep me up. I'll keep you up. We'll all keep each other standing strong for Jesus Christ, okay? If you see me down... Pick me up, dust me off, kick me in the butt, let's go. We got things to do. If I see you down the same way, if I, now remember we hold each other accountable. So if I'm seeing you fall off the path and doing something that Satan's got you focused on doing, I'm going to say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Come on, let's go. We got things to do. and We got heavenly things to do. Okay? So there's going to be sickness. There's going to be disease. Okay? There's going to be a heartache. Um, it's between now and the time Satan takes you. There's a lot of obstacles that's going to get thrown in your path. Jesus doesn't take you around those obstacles. He'll take you through them. The only way you go around them is when you take matters into your own hands. Okay, don't do that. Just pray to him. Give it to him. Praise him. If he inhabits your praises, why don't you want to praise him all day long? Praise him. When things go bad, start singing choruses. Start singing Christian songs. Start getting it pumped up and casting Satan and all those demonic demons back to hell where they belong. And then hold your head up, open the door, and go. 
start doing what he wants you to do because it's going to get tough guys the road is going to get tough i, mean, I know I, I got on here to to do a bible study but um, god put it on my heart um, that we ain't seen nothing yet okay don't look at this sickness and disease and stuff around you that's your opportunity that flu that's around you is your opportunity to bring Jesus Christ to it. That COVID that's around you, that's your opportunity to bring Jesus Christ to it. Okay? The, 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 that backstabbing, uh, gossiping family members that tries to tear you down, that's your opportunity to bring Jesus Christ to them. It is. Why not? What, what better time? You know, I'm not going to hurt you and gossip uh, like, you know, that's being done to me. Let me tell you about Jesus. And I guarantee you, when you do that, when you do that, it's going to end. I always tell people whenever you get tempted and whenever things are going bad, find a quiet place and start praising him and praying to him and talking to him. In about three or four minutes, that thought you had in your head is gone. It's gone. Hey, guys, I'm not immune to it. Matter of fact, it hits me harder uh, and quicker uh, sometimes than a lot of you guys because Satan is trying to take down those that, that God has got doing in the frontline business. If he can take down the generals, I'm not general, but if he can take down the generals of his army, then it's much easier to take down the lesser uh, troops in God's army. So let's hold each other up, okay? Um, God is good. God is good. Guys, sing it all day long. God is good. God is great. God is wonderful. Sing it and believe it. Because once you start pumping yourself full of Jesus Christ, once you start getting more Jesus and more Jesus and more Jesus and more Jesus into you, there ain't no room for Satan. There ain't no room for none of that bull baloney that he wants to throw at you because you're so full of Christ. There ain't none. He's going to try to get a wedge in there. He's going to try to get a, a crack in, 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 in this armor. Cast him out. You know, he don't fight him. Don't debate him. Don't argue with him. Just do like, like Michael did. You know, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You know, do like Paul did. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. You know what the demon said? When they tried, they were trying to be cast out by these so-called Christians that weren't in the body and weren't uh, uh, up to faith and weren't in, in prayer. They were trying to cast out these demons. And the demon, you know what the demon said? Jesus Christ, we know. Paul, we know. You, we don't know you. And they beat the poop out of those, out, out, out of those guys that tried to cast out the demons. What I'm trying to say is, when you have Jesus Christ in you, and you're praising him all day long, and you're focused on him, not yourself, and he tells you to go, and you go, and he tells you what to say, and you say, and he tells you what to do, and you do, you're so pumped up like that, there ain't nothing that can take you down, because we're all one body. Satan's going to try to. Don't let it happen. Kobe is going to be here until he takes you home and me home. That's going to be here. I don't care what they say about the vaccine. There's no vaccine for a virus except Jesus Christ. I don't care what they say about the boosters. I don't care. I, if you want to take it, great. If you don't, great. All I'm saying is it's here to stay. But so is my Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. Kobe is going to be gone soon. When Christ comes back and eradicates all the unrighteousness and all the disease, it's going to be gone. Only because he's going to take it away. All right, not man. So, won't you be on that Jesus train? Can you see the eastern sky parting and Jesus coming? Can you, I mean, seriously, it's going to happen. Can you just look up and see Christ coming? And here's the thing. Woo! I'm, oh, my goodness. You're going to be on this. If you're his, his child, you're going to be on the horse behind him. It says, and the saints will follow. So he's going to call you up to heaven, and the saints are going to follow with Christ to come down here and not annihilate the Antichrist, or the false prophet, uh, to, to annihilate right all of those unrighteous ones down here that think it's all about them. And I don't care how much money you got and how much possessions you got. You ain't, <laughs> none of that's going to save you from the wrath of Christ. Okay, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is born. He was born, and uh, at, at the time that we celebrate the other day, all right, he's gonna he's getting ready to die here soon on the cross uh, of Calvary on Easter Sunday, uh, and that's that's my favorite holiday. That's the best. That's the day that he dies for the world, and he was resurrected because he done took those sins to hell, and he was resurrected, and that's how you and I are already done. We already we already died for Christ. And we're resurrected into a new life. We got a new name. I don't know what your new name is. I don't know what my new name is. But it's written in the book. And now we go forward in the will of God. Not your will, not mine.
but his will. Thy will be done, Lord, thy will. So, all right, now that I said that, are you ready to do some Bible study? <laughs> this is a little bit of chapter 36 of Genesis because it's it's a genealogy, okay? It's a genealogy. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to go over just 36 today. I said 36 and 37, but uh, I didn't know that God was going to take me on a different train today. But just 36 and uh, chapter 36 today, I'll have to uh, uh, edit that. But look at 36 when you when you when you're done today. Read 36, and I know it's kind of boring. Everybody says that genealogy is boring. It's like he begot this person, this person begot this person. But if you look at chapter 36, look at verse six. Remember, we're we're talking about Esau now. Okay, now Esau, his descendants are going to. Uh, turn into thorns in the sides of the Israelites. They're not going to be very nice people later on. But right now, it says Esau took his wives and his sons and daughters and all the members of his household, as well as his livestock, and that he acquired in Canaan. He moved to land some distance from his brother Jacob. Why? Because God said go. He took himself, his family, Everybody, if you were in the family of Esau, if you were in the family of Abraham, if you're in the family of Isaac, if you're in the family of Mark Aaron, if you are in the family, we go where God calls us to go. And we're all born again. And we're all saved children that's in my house. If not, you're not part of the household. Even his the slaves were born again. Right? Uh, and yes, it was slaves because they were acquired. Most of them, again, we go into that before. Most of them were acquired uh, for a certain time to pay off a debt, or if even during war, it was it was it was allowed to take to take them. Anyway, the ones that's in his family are the ones that were born uh, in his family. And, and our servants in his family and our born again Christians. But he took them where God called them to take him because he, why? Because Jacob doesn't remind you of, remember, of Abraham and Lot? They had to split up because the land couldn't hold them both. This is what they did, right? Their possessions were too great for them to remain together. Uh, so they, they settled. Where did he settle at? And Edom. The Edomites. Remember that name. The Edomites, we're going to hear that many more times in the future. They become uh, thorns and in the sides of the Israelites. Why is that? Well, maybe because Esau did exactly what his dad and mom didn't want him to do, what God called him not to do, and he married outside of the family, was unequally yoked, not once, not twice, three times. What? Oh, my goodness. He did. And then if you go on, um, if you go on to verse 9, to it said, well, 9 says, this is kind of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. Okay, so all you have to do is go on, and it, it, it continues on all the way. And I'm, and I'm not going to go into all these names because I'm going to butcher the names, and you guys are going to get bored and fall asleep and, and drool, and, and I, I can't have you drooling. So it goes all the way on to... And I mean, I have time. We can go into chapter 37 because you know why? It's Joseph. Remember we talked about yesterday. Why is Joseph so important? Remember Rachel died? Rachel was was Jacob's favorite wife. Favorite one. Uh, he had he had he had Rachel, he had Leah first, remember? And his father-in-law tricked him into, into having her as a wife. And so he had to work seven more years to get Rachel. And he was in love with Rachel. And for the first, what, several years, she was barren. Couldn't have any children at all. She ended up only having two. Matter of fact, her last child, Benjamin, remember that name, Benjamin. She died giving birth to him, and she was she wanted to call him Ben Ani, which meant which meant child of my sorrow. And 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 Jacob said, "We're not having that. No, 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 no sorrow, no sorrow, no sorrow." His name's gonna be Benjamin, Benjamin, right? Hallelujah, praise God, Benjamin. That's what his name's gonna be. So she had two children, Joseph and Benjamin. Now. If Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, and, and it was a pride in his eyes, it was just Rachel. Her first son, Joseph, wouldn't that be a favorite of his too? It will be. And then, and then later on, we're going to see that he's then going to adopt later on. Uh, his favorite is going to be Benjamin, the youngest boy. Okay, And Benjamin is the youngest of all 12. Remember the 12 children. His name's not Jacob no more. Remember what his name's changed to? Raise your hand if you know. What was his name changed to? Israel, yes, Israel. His children become the 12 tribes of Israel, and they're going to be very instrumental 
and the tribulation in the last days. The, I'm telling you, the, the 144,000 right now are on the scene right now. And 144,000, I don't care what everybody, you know what the Jehovah Witness thought, oh, we're, you know, we're the 144,000 and we're going to be the only ones spared until they reached higher than 144,000. Then he said, some of us are 144,000. Baloney, let me tell you what, Jehovah Witness, you're not 144,000. None of you are. Because they're all from the 12 tribes of Israel. Dan, Benjamin, right, Joseph. But Joseph, his gets changed, okay? Watch this. Joseph, Jacob lived, and, and you're going to hear Jacob. Remember, God changed the name to Israel, and that's what it is today. Okay? Your name is changed too. He lived in the land where his father stayed in Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Okay. Joseph, Joseph, 17 years old, young man, wants to serve his daddy. Remember Joseph, the guy, the, the boy with a coat of many colors? He was given that out of pride from his dad. And usually, when you're given something like that, that means you are going to be the head of the household. He can't be the head of the household. Uh, you know, that's Reuben. I mean, he can't be. He can't He can't get the birthright of his, of his father. Watch what happens. Watch. God has got something else in mind. See, God don't care what, what you, you and I think should be right. God knows what should be right. Watch this. Joseph is going to have a dream. Watch this. Joseph, a man was 17 years old, was tending his flocks with his brothers. So, of course, what's their job? They are shepherds. Remember that. Remember that because shepherds are frowned upon, looked down upon, but it happened to be a shepherd, spread the word of Jesus Christ being born, shepherds, and a shepherd just so happened it's going to later on save the lives of thousands. You ready? He was tending the flock with his brothers, the sons of Bella. Remember, Bella was a maid servant, okay, of Rachel, and had what? More children. So some of the kids that you hear on the, the 12 tribes are from Bella, right? The maid servant. And the sons of Zippah, she was a maid servant of Leah his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So what Jacob's, what Joseph's doing is, these boys are doing something bad. I don't know if they're using God's name in vain, if they're gambling, you know, whatever they're doing, they're not doing, they're, they're doing something that's not, it's not kosher in the eyes of God. Now, some theologians believe that they were just doing things that, that, that Jacob would have frowned upon. Absolutely. Jacob would have frowned upon things that are ungodly. They, they're doing something bad. They're doing something wrong. And Joseph just so happens to be the bad messenger, the messenger that brings a bad report to his father. Now, you think these other boys are going to uh, like that? No. Tattletale. It's okay. We'll get you later. We'll get you. Now, Israel, now it goes back to his God-given name, Israel, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he he made him a richly ornament ornamental robe for him. Now, again, should he have done this? I mean, I can say, you know, you can't treat one child better than the other. But I think that it's it's done, it's orchestrated by God. It has to be, because watch what happens later on. This has to happen. Watch what God does. He loved him better, because he was born in his old age, and he was born from his favorite wife, Rachel. Okay? When his brothers saw that their father, look at verse 4, loved him more than any of the, other, of, of the others, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Even Reuben likes him. Reuben's close to him. And Benjamin, of course, um, but even they are not liking what they're hearing, what their brother is, is doing. You know, you can't tattletale on us. You know, we, we keep it between us. You know, I don't go tattletale on you. And so they look down and also seeing that their dad is giving him this beautiful robe that probably should have went to Reuben. Something ain't right. He loves him more than he loves us. And now, come on, your kids, if you feel more love uh, then the other children, you feel special. If you feel less love, you know, then you feel some animosity towards that one. And, and my mom had a favorite. She had two. She had one favorite until he died. 
And then she had her second favorite, who is still her favorite today. And and everything rises and sets on him. And uh, so I know what these guys are feeling. Do you guys know what he's feeling? I, I mean, I, I can feel it. Um, but they couldn't speak a kind word to him or about him. So maybe he was a brat. Maybe he was, a, you know, he always tattletailed on him. Daddy, daddy, you know what they're doing now? So all of a sudden, Joseph goes to bed. And he has this dream. And we know where dreams, right? Dreams, God says, I'll give you young men dreams and your old man visions. Listen to this. He had a dream in which, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Here's what his dream was. He said, listen, we were binding sheaves of grain out in the field. Ah, so you have to have grain to, to be a shepherd. You know, they the, had the grain too to help feed their animals. So we were binding these sheaves in the field. So when, when they get old and or when they get dried and ready to, ready to cut, you cut them down. I've done it before. It's a lot of hard work. And you take the sheaves and you get them in your hand as much as you can. And you bind them and you usually tie them up. And then you send them straight up and down to, to dry further. Uh, we were binding sheaves. All of us were out in the field binding sheaves. And it just so happened... Um, when that my sheaf, mine, the one I did, arose and stood upright. So they were actually, they must have been binding them, laying them down. They hadn't get ready to stand them all up yet. But mine just stood up all by itself. Imagine this, you having this dream, you're like, whoa, whoa. It was stood up all by itself. While your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. So when mine... Stood up upright. It was actually must have been taller than the rest of them. And yours all stood up too and, and started bowing down to mine. Now, they hated him before, didn't they? Because he's a tattletale and he's daddy's favorite. But now we got strike three. Now you're saying that that, that we're going to bow down to you, that you're some great almighty. And you're the second to the youngest. You know, you're going to be bowing down to us. You're going to be serving us. Whatever. I'm not serving you. I'm telling you, I had this dream. Watch what watch what Jacob says. Watch what Jacob, uh, aka Israel, watch what he says when he hears about this dream. It doesn't stand good with him either. Watch. His brothers said to him, "Do you intend to rule over us?" Look at verse eight. Will you actually rule over us? Do you intend to? And do you think you're going to? <laughs> and they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. Then he had another dream. And he told it to his brothers. So the next night must have had another dream. That's what he says this time. This time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you know, you're saying not only are we going to bow down to you, but the whole universe is going to bow down to you. The sun, the moon, and all the stars are going to bow down to you. Seriously? And we're going to see later on, remind me to tell you why the sun and the moon and the stars are going to bow down to him. Little spoiler, later on, out of the line of Joseph, according out of the line of Jacob, will come Jesus Christ. But, watch this. But, Joseph is going to do something very instrumental later on to ensure that Jesus Christ comes. <clears throat> so, here we go. Uh, when he told his father as well the, of his dreams... His father rebuked him. So I'm wondering why Joseph rebuked him. This is what Joseph said. What is this dream you had? Will you, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? And then his brothers were jealous, but his father kept the matter in mind. So two things happened there. Well, three things. Now his father's like, are you serious? Are you, so you're saying, I'm going to bow down to you? I'm your dad, and I'm the one that started all this. Pride, right? And your mother, too? You think she's going to go, really? Uh, then his brothers now get even more jealous. Now that the anger is starting to seep. And God's allowing this. Matter of fact, I think God's orchestrating this. Because something has to happen, okay? Something has to happen to ensure the continuation of the Davidic line or the line of Jesus. Uh, but what's the last thing it said? But Joseph kept this, or not Joseph, Jacob kept this in mind. So now he's thinking about this, and I bet he's talking to God about it. I bet he's praying about it. I bet he's asking God, okay, is this, you know, it, it, it's prophetic. And that's what it is. This is prophetic. He's seeing the future, the prophetic dream. 
And Joseph keeps him in mind. He's thinking, okay, well, I, 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 I don't want to forget about this. I, I've got to keep this in mind. Okay. So listen, listen what happens. Um, look at verse 12. Here we go. It started. Now his brothers had gone to graze their flocks near Shechem. It's a ways away. Um, I'm thinking it's at least a day, day and a half away. So you, you take your flocks wherever you can to, to find the graze. So they're living away from that. So they're but a day, day and a half, maybe. Um, I, I did the homework uh, earlier uh, in the year when I did this before. And I, I, I want to say as much as three days, between one and a half to three days journey. Okay. Israel said, and I often wonder why he keeps going back and forth. Jacob, Israel, Jacob, Israel, Jacob, Israel. I don't know. Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. I am going to send you to them. Okay. There's a watering hole there too. That's another reason why it's there. I'm going to send you there to them. Do you want me to spy? You want me to tell you for doing something else wrong again? Because uh, I can do that. Now, remember Joseph kept it in mind before what, not Joseph, Jacob kept it in mind what Joseph said. I'm telling you, I believe God sent, is to put it in Jacob's mind. Now, send Joseph to the boys. Because why else would he be? I mean, he's like a day and a half to three days journey away. And, and uh, they don't need his help, right? They don't need his help. So God's orchestrating this. Said, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks. I'm going to send you to them. Very well, Joseph said. Look at verse 14. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks being, bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. Again, if you look at Hebron and um, it's, it's I, don't, I can't remember. Again, I, uh, I'll have to get back with you on that. I can't remember. So he said, no problem. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? Now, it said a man. I'm telling you, I don't think in my heart it's a man. I, I think it's an angel. Because watch, Joseph can't find them. Does Joseph need to find them? Yes. Does Joseph have to find them? Yes. Is it uh, uh, very important? <laughs> More than you know, he has to find his brothers that hate him, right? So all of a sudden, this man sees him wandering around. He said to him, um, hold on a second, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? He doesn't say, I'm looking for, you know, uh, 11 other boys, you know, this high, they got sheep out here, and, you know, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they're at? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard him say, let's go to Dothan. Let me see. I'm going to put it in my head now. Okay, Dothan is a three days journey. So he was within about a day, day and a half. That's where I got the day and a half and the three days journey. So he's got some more traveling to do. So when Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan, but they saw him in a distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Now, it can't be that bad, right? I mean, you can't hate this boy that bad to kill him. You're seeing him from a distance, and you know, there comes a tattletale. There comes daddy's favorite. There comes the one we're going to bow down to. Oh, there comes God himself, right? Uh, I think we should just get rid of him, get him out of our hair, kill him. Now, Satan's on the scene, too. And some theologians believe that that man... Was say you know because Satan can appear as an angel light. Satan can appear, okay. Was Satan himself making sure that this is going to happen? I disagree, but anyway, Satan's on the scene because Satan is now boiling up in these guys' mind, rehashing. Remember, I said earlier today when I go stay in that old rut, when I go rehash all this stuff that that's been this goes on in our life that Satan wants us to focus on. That's where they're at. They're in that rut, and Satan has got them rehashing all the stuff that this boy's done to them and said to him everything. So it says not one, not two, but they, even Reuben, even Benjamin, plotting to kill him. Oh boy. Um, 
and some theologians believe I, that Benjamin wasn't there, but we'll find out. I, okay, here we go. Then, then, they yelled, here comes a dreamer real loud. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into the these cisterns and, and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So, so we're going to take matters into our own hands. One, we're going to murder when now God says, I shall not kill. Intentional murder, okay? And then we'll see about his dreams. We'll see if those dreams really were prophetic. Now, they should have they should have learned something here in a little bit that they were true. Now, when Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life. So now Reuben's kind of getting, maybe God's out, or Jesus is there working, and, and Reuben here said, no, no, don't, don't kill the boy. Don't kill the boy. That would be right. Don't kill the boy. Reuben's the oldest, so they're they're gonna they're gonna follow after Reuben, or they're gonna really take his 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 words in consideration. Don't let's don't kill him. Let's don't kill him. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. I lost my that. With let's don't kill him. <clears throat> this don't lay a hand on him at all. Look at verse twenty-two. Let's not take his life. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern. Which is like an old well, uh, an old hole, an old cistern, an old well that no longer has water now. In the, in the, in the desert, we, we does not lay a hand on him. It's so in this, in this hole. Okay. Reuben said this to rescue him. He was going to come back later on and get him out. There is Reuben. Reuben is doing the right thing. And we're going to learn later on that Reuben is going to be that kind of guy all through his life. Reuben is said is sinking. He's I'm gonna convince them to sow in this hole. We'll take off, we'll just leave him here. Okay? And then he's thinking later on I'll get him out. I'll get him out of the hole and then he could say he escaped on his own and blah blah blah. So Reuben's got this mind, he's gonna get him out. <clears throat> okay. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe. How dare you wear this? You shouldn't even be wearing this at all. This should go to Reuben. You know, someone, you know, your daddy loves you so much. No, no. Would, would take his robe off. The richly ornamented robe he was wearing that took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. They came down to eat their meal and they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites. Boy, what comes around goes around. Ishmaelites, huh? From Ishmael. Way back with Abraham, right? And his son Ishmael that was born out of not trusting God, out of <clears throat> Hagar, the Egyptian maidservant. Remember Egyptian? And they were kicked out of Egypt because Abraham lied. <clears throat> and he was given those servants and, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, he looking and seeing, they're seeing this this Ishmaelite caravan. And they buy slaves. Hey, beautiful. You ready to leave? Yes. What time? Did you get my message? Uh uh. I have to go to Mount Vernon. I thought you only had work two days, two hours. No. The girl Mount Vernon called off. She's sick. We got a lot of sick people right now. It would be home nine o'clock. Um, probably between eight and eight thirty. Oh yeah, love you. All right, Lenny. All right, have a good day. Oh, I was, well, I'll try to have a good day. I was going to have a better one with you, with you here, but. Sorry. That's all right. Love you. Love you. Okay, so here's Sophia. the thing. Sophia. The Israel, the, you don't think God has the Ishmaelites oh. coming Sophia, through there God. at just this Sophia, right time? You see how God orchestrated everything. He orchestrated the one first dream, orchestrated the second dream, gave the heart. I'm telling you, we're loud. He's orchestrating us all. Jacob's got this heart, so God is using this. He's orchestrating it all. It just so happens that the Israel, the Ishmaelite caravan's coming through, and it's allowed. It's not after this. Shortly after this, there comes a law in some Leviticus about uh, selling people off like this. But we can sell him. We'll have him out of our hair. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll make up this elaborate scheme of what happened. Watch this. 
They saw this Ishmaelites coming. Oh, my goodness. They were coming from Gilead. So it just so happened that they're coming from Gilead and they're going probably going to Dothan or going somewhere close by uh, to sell their wares. So in Gilead, there's like hardly nothing there. And so and if they whatever you get in Gilead, they usually buy it and then take it and mark it up like you know, we do today, you know, retail and wholesale. So they're coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balms, myrrh, and they're on the way to take them uh, to uh, through Dothan and to Egypt. Huh. Who was from Egypt? Hagar. Her son was Ishmael. So they're on their way to Egypt. Why? Because something's going to happen here pretty soon in Egypt that needs Joseph. But he is an outlander. He is not an Egyptian. He's not a god, a false god worshiper. He is a godly man going to an ungodly country. The same country that Abraham was kicked out of for lying. He's going back. <laughs> And he's, but he's only 17 years old, a teenager. What can a teenager do for God? I'm telling you, if a teenager is humbled and says, your will be done, Lord, here I am. He can do anything. God can do anything through him. Here we go. Judah said to his brothers, and the second deal was, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come now, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. And not lay our hands on him. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. So all the brothers agreed. Greed took over. So Satan, I'm telling you, there's demons there and there's angels there. And you, you would see it all around you today. That's why we come to crossroads every day, all day long. And what decision we should make, godly decision or an ungodly decision. The angels are there telling Benjamin, right? Not, uh, not Benjamin, Judah. Hey, you could get money from him, right? And the angels or the demons like, no, have him killed. Have him killed. Kill him. Kill him. Because they know that if Joseph dies, um, the divinic line would be eliminated. And I'm, which we'll find out why here later on. <clears throat> but no, let's sell him. And we'll split the money. Okay? We'll split the money. All right? We all got to keep our same stories. of dad asked each and every one of us keep up the same stories. Okay, let's do this. So when the Midianite merchants, Midianite and the Ishmaelites are they're, they're, they're the same, they just they're it's like Kashoctonians being called Ohioans. All right, uh, I'm from Kashokton, but I'm also Ohioan. Okay. So the Midianite merchants came by. The brothers pulled Joseph up out of the sister and sold him for twenty shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. Okay, that's about eight ounces. A silver, twenty shekels, about eight ounces. It wasn't. They didn't have. It wasn't about coins and the face of the coins. And this is a dollar bill. And this is. It was about the weight. So you got about eight ounces, and eight ounces divided by well, at that time would be eleven. Uh, and some theologians believe Benjamin was a dare, so be ten. So they would all get their fair share if they kept the same story. Okay, they sold him. <laughs> He's on his way to Egypt when Reuben returned to the cistern. And so that Joseph, ah, so Reuben wasn't there. So Reuben must have been out and about tending to his sheep, doing what he had to do. He didn't know that Satan put it in into Judah's mind to sell him. So Reuben had no part in selling him. He was going to save him. So when he returned, he wasn't there. Oh, my goodness. You think they're going to talk Reuben into keeping his mouth shut? I don't know. Money, 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 right? Um, he went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Where's he at? What should I do now? Then they got Joseph's robes, slaughtered a goat, dipped a robe into blood, and they took the ornamental robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it and see whether it is your son's robe or not. They know it was his robe. You know, maybe his eyesight was poor, but you know, what I mean, they're they're saying, hey, you know, uh, check this out. Is is this the one, the robe that you give Joseph? Now, here's what Joseph's thinking. 
he sent the boy Joseph, or Jacob's thinking, I sent Joseph to go check on the boys. He's going to he's going to regret that for a long, long time. He's going to beat himself up about it. So he must have been tore up by an, a wild animal between here and where the boys were. Is this his robe? You would know. 33. We're almost done. we got three more verses. He recognized it. Jo Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, recognized it. It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has been surely torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, mourned for his son many days. Now, how can you, you're the boys, and you're seeing your dad, the whom you love, mourning, wailing, mourning, and it's going to be beating you up. you got to be saying, uh, but you, now you can't really say anything because you got to keep the cover up going, right? Because um, He's sold as a slave. And technically, in order for Joseph, if Jacob did find out, Jacob would have to have paid uh, sometimes up to double to get him back if he would be allowed to be sold back. So they really got to keep up this sh charade, right? All his sons and daughters, daughters, plural, came to comfort him. You see, and that's why a lot of people say that Dinah was his only <clears throat> daughter. Oh, it says here, daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in the morning will I go down to the grave to my son. In morning, not in the morning, in morning. I'm, I'm, I'm going to grieve until the, God takes me. So his father wept for him. Joseph's father wept. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in, to, in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. So, you, need to, you can't tell me God is not orchestrating this because he wasn't supposed to stay with the Ishmaelites, a.k.a. the Midianites. He was supposed to go higher, to the highest he can go, to Potiphar's guard, the guard, to Potiphar, the guard of Pharaoh. The king. Pharaoh means president or you know, uh, prime minister. Um, so it's, it's not the name, but it's just, you know, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh. Uh, so, Kessie, you went out? Kessie. Hold on, guys. Here. Okay. So, uh, that's it. You can't, so, hey, Don. So you can't tell me that God didn't direct this whole thing. Um. And everybody says, here's the thing, though. God is in control. You've got mail. God's in control. Always is, always will be. We still have choice. We still make decisions, okay? Um, they, Those boys were motivated by hate, envy, jealousy, greed. Look at all the weapons Satan threw at them. They keep it boiling and keep it heated up and keep it boiling until something was going to happen. But Reuben listened with a heart from God through whatever an angel, whatever, through God, to not kill him, to not let them kill him. He wasn't even there, so God had orchestrated where he wasn't even going to be there because I think that he would, have, he would have not agreed to have him sold. But when he came back and found out it was done, he was in the soup, in for a penny, in for a pound. He was in for it. And I think that it, he regretted it for a long time. We'll go find out later on who mourns. I can't do it because I'll give you a, it would be a spoiler. Okay. So c come back tomorrow about 8 15, 8 20. We're going to get it, it, it. This is going to get good. This gets really good. If anybody knows the story, story of Joseph, um, I'm going to give you some insight that you may not have known. Okay. That's what it's all about, right? Learn it all you can. Okay. I'm going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer for um, Chuck Eichel. <clears throat> and um, this country say a prayer if daily guys i'm serious for your mayor for the you know, chief of police uh for your governor there's <laughs> the congressman um, say, a say a prayer for them that god will use them that, that, that they'll be humble enough to allow um, god to work through them you don't even have to be a godly man if you have a heart for others and others around you you're, you're going to tend to make uh, better decisions based on what God wants. But 
it's going to show you God's in control. He's in control, okay? Don't blame him. People blame him. Well, I can't believe all this suffering and stuff is happening. He's allowing all this to happen. Um, man makes decisions. Somebody made a decision to engineer this virus. Um, God's allowed to happen for a purpose. Okay, you don't see the bigger picture. I'm a father and a, and a papal. I don't have time to explain to my children or my uh, grandchildren why I make a decision. I don't have time to sit down and explain everything. It's not my place to sit down and explain everything to them. It's my place to guide them the best way that uh, I can and for them to listen and learn and, and grow in that. And God the same. God's not going to explain everything to us. We're supposed to live by faith and know that he's in control. I live by faith. You're saved by faith. You're forgiven by faith. You live by faith. You're healed by faith. Uh, everything is faith. Faith is that umbilical cord from your spirit to his. If you don't have it, it's severed. And nothing's going to happen without faith, okay? Either your sins will drag you to hell or faith. And what, and what Christ Jesus did for you is going to take you to heaven. And in the meantime, God's going to have his work done through you. So, all right, let's, let's do it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all of our leaders, Lord. Uh, Mark Mills, the, the mayor. We pray for uh, uh, Portman. We pray for uh, Governor DeWine. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for all our congressmen and our senators. We pray for the president, uh, Biden, for uh, Camellia. Um, we pray for all those that are in leadership that have a position now, Lord, to do what's right for this country. Work through them, Lord, in a way that's pleasing to you, Lord. Help Chuck Eichel, Lord, get through this heartache that he's got. He's got to be feeling this 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 pain and this of separation from his wife, Lord. Um, maybe use this, Lord, to bring him closer to you. Uh, maybe this could be the avenue, Lord, that he can grasp a hold of to become a child of yours. Um, use us, all of us, Lord, uh, to do your will. And we pray, Lord, that you can use us to make someone's life better today. Put a smile on someone's face today, Lord, to help someone get through a divorce you're getting through, Lord. <clears throat> um, to, to Whatever people are going through, they can use us, Lord. Let us all say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. What, what, what can I do for you? Because in doing that, Lord, we show you love and love to others around us, Lord. Let us show love more to you and them than we do ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 815, 820 is tomorrow, guys. Whenever you get down and out, call me. Send me a text or start praising God. Put on a Christian song. This, this, if anything, get on your knees and start talking to him and say, Lord, I got something in my heart. I want to, I need to talk about it. And he wants to hear you. A loving father wants to hear um, the heart of his children. He really does. God bless you. See you tomorrow. About 8.15, 8.20. Bye.